Hello, Dr. J here. I just downloaded the conductivity simulation from FET.Colorado.edu. Yes, this is another FET simulation. Here I have a battery, couple wires, and a material. The material consists of metal, which is a conductor, plastic, which is an insulator, and a photoconductor, which is in between a conductor and an insulator or commonly called a semiconductor. Right here on the left side is a diagram, an energy diagram in which we have two energy bands, the valence band and the conduction band. In between these two bands is an energy gap which is a forbidden region where no electrons can reside. The valence band is where all the electrons reside and it depends on if there are any free electrons associated in the valence band depending on the material. So if it's a plastic, that means all the valence bands are, full, are filled in which there are very few free electrons. So when I raise the voltage here, let's say all the way up to 2 volts, you see nothing happens when I when the program is run. And you can see if I pause it and play it, nothing happens. However, when I switch it to a metal, we see that the band gap is very narrow and there's a lot of free electrons associated with a metallic material, such as gold and copper. And when I put it in the plastic, we see that there's a large band gap energy, so the electric field is not enough to influence these electrons, whereas in a metal, the electric field formed by the battery causes the electrons to flow within the wires and in the material to get attracted to the positive side of the battery since there is a deficiency of electrons. Let me pause for a moment and just show you there's the metal and here's the plastic. If I run it, there's the plastic and then there's the photoconductor which is has a band gap in between those of a metal and those of an insulator. However, the band gap is narrow enough such that light, which I said in the early video, has enough energy to kick some electrons up to the conduction band so that this circuit will work. This is illustrated when I sh shine the light on this material. So as you can see, electrons start to flow because there's enough energy in the light to kick the electrons in the valence bands up to the conduction band. Hopefully, this illustrates the difference of materials depending on the energy gap and the amount of free electrons. Let me pause again and show you that for metal, it has a narrower band gap than the photoconductor. Here's the photoconductor, here's the metal, here's the photoconductor, and here's an insulator. Okay, hopefully again, this illustrates the concept, the difference between a metal, which is a conductor, a plastic, which is an insulator, and a photoconductor, which is halfway in between a conductor and insulator, or commonly known as a semiconductor. You'll get this more of these concepts in later classes called solid state physics.